jump straight into it. Yes, I was commenting on the eye tracking tool. So I have it running in the local debugging mode and also uh, I have it as my camera as well. Which way is it? This way. No, I can't point it. It's like, yeah. And it is the same camera. Wait, why do I have two cameras running? That's not a good sign. Potentially could mean something is wrong. Is something wrong? Yeah, we, we might try the eye tracking with two cameras at some stage. At the moment, there's a problem on the mobile. I could not actually reproduce it. So if I go mobile, uh, and this is the resolution, the dimension of the screen that I have uh, on my mobile device, but it doesn't behave in the same way on my mobile. Um, the video is... Uh, well, so it's loading it as a regular website, not as a mobile website. And that's, I think, a problem. It might be a problem if the width of the... So we have this video container in style CSS. Yeah, this might be... This might be an issue. The rub flex. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I don't know anything about CSS. That's what I have the port for. But also the fact that I cannot replicate it. Wait, are we calling this CSS correctly? Yes, yeah, so we have one uh, CSS for the entire project. Uh, so all the website looks uh, more or less the same. Um, and then we have another one for a specific uh, application. And I wonder if they sometimes clash. In the actual application, we should not, where is it, have a video container. By the way, this uh, session is meant to be interactive. So if you want to pop your um, anything in the chat, will be more than happy to respond except questions like where you're from and stuff like that which yeah which uh, yeah for some reason some platforms are <laughs> uh, more encouraging this type of questions and i don't blame them it's hard to get the uh, engagement Um, so let's check the CSS for, yes, yeah, so this is the CSS for the whole project. Could probably be uh, minimized. Yeah, anyway, I, so the main problem is that I can't replicate the thing on my, in my browser. Hey, in the browser it's working okay. On my phone, the overlay. We can do like a split view, but that, that that's fine. That's not what's happening. What's happening is that 
the video footage is uh, not starting at zero and then the overlay is uh, offset so that's uh, but we'll see anyway we'll see if uh, we did change the code a bit so hopefully just uh, magically gets uh, fixed yeah make sure that the position is uh, absolute for both the video and the tracking canvas that meant to be overlaid it's the overlaid bit on top yeah otherwise you can change your eye width height a uh, height and then the main thing is that the threshold thing actually makes a lot of difference because it's uh, it's finding the darkest point essentially in that uh, region of interest yeah so if you're looking directly at the camera yeah it's working better for one, for one I then the other and yes the light in the room will make a lot of difference as well just two more light and yeah you can essentially go right for it make the ROI smaller actually not looking directly at the camera that could be a problem as well anyway play around with it and let me know what you think it's on the uh, the main page and yes uh, it's uh, everything all the tools being optimized for desktop not mobile at the moment so uh, it is work in progress if anyone knows how to optimize for mobile do let me know as well uh, last time so we edit yes we have a bunch of uh, the blogs now it would be good to have this plan outman plot actually display real data do have just the basic uh, python code but that's just generating examples it's just uh, random a uh, random stuff a uh, random values we will eventually apply it on to real EEG or ECG, let me know what do you prefer. Should I do more EEG or ECG stuff? Um, right, another thing we were doing yesterday is so this about section. We added a few more pages. There's a potential uh, student project. So if you have any students that you know or you are a student yourself, you want to do a project, maybe send this to your supervisor. Uh, one is uh, mainly around uh, doing X AI, what is it? Explainable AI with biomedical data. No black boxes. Big no to black boxes. So we'll explain everything and know what's inside the box. And our project is around visualization, which we, as you can tell, are highly interested in. Uh, we're also doing this resource page, so we actually updated this one. Let's open it in a, a separate window. We'll do some more work on that. We're essentially putting it into a table. Load the table in a sec was called resources HTML. It is one run it locally. This was not published yet. Here's this table that we're still populating. 
Yeah, a lot of the items are unknown, even though it should be pretty straightforward to fill the year of release. And this has a um, data set comparison thing. A number of subjects, yeah. Of course, it's quite important some of the subjects are not human. So that's uh, important to mention. But yes, I mean, obviously, once they're not human, probably have uh, a, a model of uh, some sort of condition, uh, which is, uh, you know, will require a completely different uh, type of analysis. Then we have the data format. And yes, MAT files can be opened in Python. I do not use MATLAB anymore because it's too expensive. This one, I don't know why it's unknown. Yeah, EDF is a standard format for a EEG. I don't know what these ones are. So if you know what they are, uh, let me know. Yeah, we, uh, one big thing is if the um, it's quite important to know if the data is uh, raw, processed, pre-processed, so on and so forth. Heavily processed or lightly processed. And if there were any additional modalities recorded. So we know quite a bit about the, this NeuroVista implant data. Most of the tools on the page are from the EEG tools are from that data. ECG, most of the tools are actually a synthetic a EEG, like this one. It looks real because there's noise added to it, but uh, this is synthetic data. Well, I don't know, maybe it doesn't look real. A, all the EEG data on the website is this uh, a NeuroVista data this essentially publicly available on IEG.org um, so that's another website that uh, holds um, a repos so we have this bit somewhere Yes, search platforms. Uh, so essentially, IEG is a search platform. Well, it's not a search platform. It's a it's a repo, not a repo. Is it a repo? No, it's a platform. And that said, yeah, they're just platforms. We fix that bit. So they have a set platforms. Um, yeah, I E G dot org would be one of those. It should go there. Yeah, it does require a basic uh, a login. So that's what we ranking the data sets. Yeah, so you have a data set. Okay, you have a study. Okay, you have a device. <laughs> yeah, this becomes highly convoluted, isn't it? Because we too also have devices. Uh, so we have a recording device, say for EEG. Then that device could have been uh, used for a specific study that had a certain number of patients and uh, the patients, for example, were in uh, different groups, so healthy uh, controls and, uh, uh, say, epilepsy patients. Then the same device could be used in multiple studies. Then you have uh, potentially the data collected from one study being published in multiple uh, repositories. Um, yeah, so we have to monitor all this stuff how do we make sense of it 
or we pop it into GPT-4 <laughs> what we normally do a pop the actual and the actual HTML that we have sometimes uh, refusing to actually look at the links Yeah, but I was just starting to. Interesting. It didn't start from the um, from the bottom. Yeah, we're showing ads on this page. Should be okay. Hopefully, getting relevant ads. Yeah, we have an overview. Need to check how it looks like on smaller screens. Who knows? Yeah, it doesn't look good. How do you show tables on smaller screens? Do you ask um, to rotate the phone or? I have to deal with this later. Uh, right, so some of these links, um, okay, so say this link goes uh, to a data set, a specific data set, the description, so on and so forth, it's on the uh, fixture. Um, this link, however, just goes um, well because it requires a login. So for you, it will just go to the website and uh, not the extension with the actual data. It's now a problem with. No problem of uh, websites that require login. That's why there is no login on uh, on my site. So it looks the same for everyone. Logins just uh, yeah add additional complexities. People don't like it. What I'm saying is um, well, because it's a link so because it requires a login, it will just go to the general website, not where the database is actually stored. So it should go into platform. Probably yes. If you go scholar, this uh, data set was used. Supposedly 300, more than 300 times, 400 times. Yeah, that looks like yeah. <laughs> That's actually quite a good paper. <laughs> Reading it when it came up. 
the war story behind launching a venture to treat epilepsy. It's quite a quite a roller coaster this one. Yeah, the data itself is from 2014 or something. It's funny how when you sort by date, you only get four results. It's really odd. When you sort by relevance, you get 442 results. Um, some of this data is on Kaggle, yeah, Kaggle as well. Anyway, sorry, I'm jumping around, but uh, jumping around. Hopefully, it still makes some sort of sense. What, what, work? Because we're really running something on it. We're running the eye tracker, don't we? Well, we don't have to do that. Where are we running the eye tracker from? Okay, now the um, the one that I'm using this face on is uh, on the website, so it's deployed. It's a should be the Flask, uh, yeah, Flask application. Bum, 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 bum. Right, this one. Yeah. Right, so we have this data set. It's currently on Kaggle. This competition, it's uh, finished. And there you go. So it go straight to the uh, leaderboard, and then you have your public point two one point two seven. Yeah, quite a big difference in this team um, published the solution and I have different members did different things. They just took all the models uh, together. So one person was doing a 2D model, then why did you need a frequency transform? They only used raw EEG, interestingly. They didn't use the images, the spectrogram images. And that's interesting because the data yeah, was essentially yeah, I covered this before. Go look at my previous videos. Um, yeah, I have the raw EEG there. Why the resolution of this thing is not great. Uh, and then the spectrogram, essentially four spectrograms for each recording, each uh, from uh, a quarter of a brain. The uh, leaderboard team Sony. Yeah, interesting. Say the team that got second place uh, with the public score went two places down with the private uh, data set. The private leaderboard is calculated with approximately 65% of the test data. This competition has completed the very leaderboard reflects the final. So this, uh, yeah, so this 65, 
a percent of the data was not available to the competitors. It's kind of important to note. That's why it's called private. Anyway, interestingly, the winning uh, team only looked at the raw EG, not at the spectrogram. They did a frequency transform. I don't know what they mean by to the model. Did they publish their stuff separately, did they? Yeah. No, they did take the spectrogram images. Stacked scalogram image. Is the same data? No. What? Anyway, the point is that we will uh, try and deploy a, you know, train a fuzzy logic uh, explainable AI thing on the same uh, model and then um, compare it to a one of those models. Obviously, one you know, best a first place, whatever second place. Don't worry about the actual HTML. Hey, we want to focus on the table. We want to keep uh, placing all the mentioned and potentially new data sets into the table. And yes, ideally we would like for it to be displayed okay on a mobile phone as well but if it's too hard uh, don't worry about it yep the header on small screens what why got it focusing on the table especially with mobile responsiveness in mind here are some technical suggestions one responsive design Making tables responsive on mobile devices can be tricky due to their row and column structure. One common approach is to reformat the table into a more mobile-friendly structure using CSS and sometimes JavaScript. Here's a basic CSS-only technique. CSS at media screen and max width 600px, table width 100%, display block. I don't know why this bot is reading uh, the, whole, uh, the whole text, including the code. I have another bot. 
and in your HTML, modify each less than TD greater than to have a data label attribute. It doesn't sound that good, but then it can uh, uh, read uh, just anything you want, really. Data-driven approach. If the data set is expected to grow or change frequently, consider loading the table data dynamically from a server or a JSON file. That's not this idea. will make maintenance easier. Pagination or load more. If the table gets too long, think about implementing pagination or load more functionality to avoid overwhelming mobile users with too much information at once. <laughs> interactive elements. For mobile users, ensure interactive elements like links are easily tappable. Good spacing and larger font sizes help. Testing. Regularly test the table on various devices to ensure compatibility and responsiveness. Tools like Chrome DevTools can simulate mobile devices for this purpose. Accessibility. Keep accessibility in mind. Screen readers interpret tables well, but make sure that any dynamic or responsive features also maintain this accessibility. Remember, CSS-based solutions are often more maintainable and less intrusive than JavaScript-based ones, especially for something like responsive design. The CSS method above keeps your markup clean and relies on CSS for the heavy lifting, which is generally a good practice for responsive design. Okay, not uh, overwhelming uh, mobile users. Sounds like a great idea. Um, how do we move the table into a JSON file and uh, pass it correctly on the page? Uh, yes, load more uh, for mobile users will be great as well. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's rather complicated, is it? seem to become rather it seem to become complicated oh come on it seemed to become complicated hey can you generate the whole JSON file Um, shall we turn it into a Flask application? Because we're already deploying some on our server. Then surely this does not need a backend. This is the HTML code that I have so far. Yep. Turning your HTML table into a dynamic, JSON-driven Flask application can make it more manageable and responsive especially if the dataset is large or frequently updated. Here's a step-by-step -step guide to set this up. Step 1. Creating the JSON file. You need to convert your table data into JSON format. This can be done manually or with a script, but for this example, I'll manually create a JSON structure based on your table. Turning your HTML table into a dynamic We're going for Flask, are we? Create your Flask app. In your project directory, create a new Python file, e.g. app.py, and set up your Flask application. Link to a JavaScript file. In your HTML, add a link to a new JavaScript file that will handle fetching and displaying the data.
Create a div for the table. In your HTML, replace the existing table with an empty div where the table will be dynamically inserted. Sounds like we're going for a full uh, application. Run your Flask application. Ensure that your JSON file and HTML template are in the correct directories, templates for HTML and the root or specified directory for JSON. Customize the JavaScript function to format the table as per your design requirements. You can expand this setup with pagination or a load more button for better performance on mobile devices. Okay. The question if um, with a uh, back end Will it be fetching the JSON file from the server every time? Or is the option of using a CDN a content delivery network is still uh, would be still available? When you use Flask as your backend to serve a JSON file, by default, the server will read the JSON file from the disk every time a request is made to the endpoint, like get underscore datasets in the example. This can be inefficient, especially if the file is large or the requests are frequent. You can read the JSON file once when the server starts and store its content in memory. This way, the server will serve the data from memory for each request, which is much faster. I don't think that's how my server works. Don't think it will actually be faster if I keep it in memory all the time. If you have static content, like JSON files, that doesn't change often, using a CDN can be highly beneficial. A CDN caches your content in multiple geographic locations closer to users, reducing the load time. Using CDN for static files. You can host your JSON file on a CDN. Whenever there's a request for the JSON data, the request will be served by the nearest CDN server instead of your Flask server. Flask plus CDN. In your Flask app, you would provide a URL to the CDN hosted JSON file instead of serving it directly from your server. Yeah, know how a CDN works, but uh... in memory caching, while faster, this approach increases your server's memory usage. It's best for files that are not too large and don't change often. CDN, this is more scalable and can significantly reduce server load and response times for static content. However, there might be costs involved depending on the CDN service you use. Both methods have their advantages and can be used in conjunction to improve the performance and scalability of your application. Choose based on your specific use case, considering factors like data size, update frequency, and user geography. So if we continue with uh, having everything, having the table in the HTML format, would it by default be using a CDN? Hosting static files. A CDN is primarily used for hosting static files like CSS, JavaScript, images, and even HTML pages. Your HTML file with the table can be hosted on a CDN.
Faster content delivery. The CDN will cache this HTML file in multiple locations globally. When a user accesses your page, the CDN delivers the content from the nearest server location to the user, ensuring faster load times. Updating content. If you frequently update the HTML file, you need to update the file on the CDN. The CDN may have a cache invalidation period during which the old file may still be served to users. Dynamic data handling. If your table data is dynamic and changes often, you might want to consider using AJAX to load the data into the table. In this case, your HTML file, with the static part of your website, can still be hosted on a CDN, while the data can be fetched from your server or another API endpoint. Setting up CDN. You typically choose a CDN provider, like Cloudflare, AWS CloudFront, etc., upload your static files there, and then update your website's DNS settings to serve files from the CDN. Performance. Faster loading times due to geographically distributed servers. Scalability. Better handles high traffic loads. Reliability. CDNs often have high uptime and can handle server failures more gracefully. Bandwidth reduction. Offloads traffic from your primary server. Not ideal for rapidly changing data. CDNs are great for static content, but not ideal if your table data changes frequently unless you employ AJAX to load the data dynamically. Complexity and cost. Setting up and maintaining a CDN might add complexity and potential costs depending on the service provider. In summary, using a CDN for hosting your static HTML file, including the table structure, is a good practice for performance and scalability. If the table data is dynamic, consider using AJAX to fetch the data from your server and populate the table, while the rest of the static content is served via the CDN. Potatoes, data set, platforms. Um. A fig share. Place that one last. Those. Um, it's populated pretty well. Some website from the Netherlands say, for do you research data? And we have, well, Figshare should work. We already tested this thing before. Maybe not. I'm just a bit slow to load. And those are preloaded with the EEG in the search. Zenodo. Electricity demand in Europe. Uh, <laughs> it's the best match. Dry electron graphy. Right, this is better. Flower electrodes. 
it's from that's pretty recent the second one's from 2017 Okay, that this. Okay, that works. Let's try again. Control. Uh, let's just say five. It's not a right. Seem to show something useful. By the way, if you haven't checked out binarychaos.com, please go do so. You will be supporting this project that way. Ephesionet. Page not found what? Come on, no. How do I just do it from the uh, from the URL? I go physionet data. Okay, it seem to be loading data sets uh, only anyway. Those in just double check it's working okay. Your net is EG right? Then we have the IEG portal that, yeah, requires the uh, login and Google. Data set search. Right now we actually this. Yeah, the problem with the NeuroVista implant because the again I already said it like five times or something, ten times, but because it has a, a it requires a login, I cannot have the a, the actual link to to the to the data set. It goes to the platform. Maybe maybe I can. Yeah, it's a bit of a broken website. It's just loading forever, is it? Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Yeah, it's super hard to search. A general non epileptic, yeah, it was epileptic uh, experiment search. Um, nine items. Yep. <laughs> Um, the 
subject name and day. No, that would be. No, that's the study number. That must be subject. That must be day. So I have one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. But it's a long term, so there's actually a, a lot of data. And um, this does, it doesn't have a URL, so it's a problem. It's a problem. I don't know how, how this website works. I think it's sort of it's designed quite some time ago. error on the server that's not good yeah you can even view the data from here but I would not attempt it I think it will uh, uh, It might not work. So that's safe to assume uh, this data is from one, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight uh, dogs to know. Maybe. Yeah, this table is impossible to to work with. Your list. Dogs, there was thirty one rats, ten normal, twenty wife with cortical infarction. Yeah, do I want to know how that model is actually being achieved? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Okay, well, what else we've got? Busy on net. Um, that's not good. Check. Uh, check this. Uh, on the original uh, okay hey uh, we need to replace it let's find it the html hey uh, maplips does it's the just Format this document. So why it does it that way? It's weird. It's the, the uh, 
a second one, is it? And the link doesn't work anymore. That's the problem uh, of some of these data sets, the, of some of these rep repositories, that data sets just might disappear. Just disappear. So I'm thinking on uh, server. Shall we, considering they were in the public domain, give a Creative Commons a license? We should be able to keep a copy, mostly human, something like that. And let's go physionetty g just do data um it doesn't say how many there are Possible, but there are only three. Yeah, one of them is open access. This one has quite a lot of. Does this pose safe actuation? Music, perfume, coffee for enhancing cognitive states include subjects, responses, reaction times, and physiological data. EDA, HR, PVP, PPG, temperature accelerometer, EEG. Oldest this one published last year, end of last year, so like a couple of months ago. It's uh, open access, it's interesting. But the one that we were looking for that <laughs> just disappeared, uh, that's not good. And I'm pretty sure it's been used quite extensively. Yeah, there's about uh, almost 3,000 publications they mention it. It's not going anywhere. I'm sure there will be other repositories that uh, uh, have it. <laughs> it's really in the uh, how is it even possible uh, in Google Scholar when you uh, sort by relevance it gives you uh, 2600 results you sort by date it gives you 144 and one of them is three days ago but we don't want that we want the older one Yeah, it's not a very uh, useful. What happened to the physio? To the physionet link? It's freely available on physionet.org. Is the uh, link? There is, 
Yep, good luck. Good luck. <laughs> I actually think I might have a copy of it. Uh, locally somewhere. Should we start another repo? It's only 2.7 gigabyte. How did I manage to compress 2.7 into 500 megabyte? That's interesting. I assume those are subject IDs. The data is in CSV files. Just that. Start them Unix time. I love Unix time. CDA sampling rate. <laughs> Why do it? <laughs> okay. Sampling rate could be just a variable. You don't need it with every entry. Uh, sampling time you again could have just had the uh, delta T essentially your sampling rate instead of uh, having the actual numbers that do not change why don't they change it's a bit odd isn't it it's already for red flags the eda actually changes that's good it's at point eight point nine somewhere quite variable starting off zero is a bit odd it's probably the first sample can be ignored where's the EEG EEG right only four electrodes Thumbs times are actually changing. It's a good sign. It doesn't mean there is like inconsistent sampling rate. It doesn't mean there is a drift in the uh, times between samples. Why this is just not a single variable. Then we have four electrodes, uh, which might be not enough for most tasks. I don't know what that is. Is that sound auditory? So it's response to sound. Well, the problem is that this could be some sort of artifact. Uh, if the especially if the sound is uh, yeah, there's also some problems with sound uh, being played that could be actually interfering uh, the EEG electrodes could be picking up uh, the sound especially if coming through uh, you know earbuds that have a magnet uh, in them but I don't know anything about it so yeah it would be interesting to have a look at it uh, considering it was published recently it's uh, open source a creative commons license so we could look at that. Yeah, it's a shame that some, some data sets just disappear from the public domain. That's not good. Uh, we'll see if we can find it somewhere else. Oh, I think we actually might have a copy of the data set ourselves. Because all these papers that mention it. Yeah, how many papers mention uh, this uh, link? Right, eighty-seven. Yeah, and. Um, 
that data set is gone ski. That's not good. Yeah, might add a uh, regulation. I might uh, add this data set to the mix. Can we ask? Uh, okay, we might continue with the HTML uh, format for now. Can you add the following data set into the table? Sure, let's add the specified data set to your HTML table. You'll insert a new row into the existing table structure with the details of the data set. Here's how you can modify the table in your HTML. You can place this less than tr greater than table row tag inside your existing less than table greater than tag in the HTML file, following the structure of the other dataset entries. This will add a new row to your dataset table. Remember to replace placeholder text like unknown with the actual information if you have it. The description I provided is based on your link and might need to be adjusted based on more detailed information about the dataset. Yeah, it is actually uh, look the link brain variable monitoring experiment mm, why is it experiment a1 how do you know the quality <laughs> how do you know the quality is high um 2020 no it's 2023 where did you get Yeah, we need to add the, um, if it's a EG. I don't think he actually looked at the link. Great. Let's add this specific data set to your HTML table. I'll create a new table row for the Brain Wearable Monitoring Experiment 101 dataset. You can insert this less than tr greater than into your existing less than table greater than structure in the HTML. The details are based on a general understanding of the dataset from the provided link, but you should adjust the specifics, like the number of subjects, exact data formats, etc., as necessary to match the dataset's actual properties. Go back and something. Uh, yeah, use this link instead. Sure. Let's add the new data set to your HTML table. Yeah, that's more like. You will need to append a new row to the table with the details of the data set. Here's the updated part of your HTML with the new data set added. Insert this row in the appropriate place in your table. If you have specific information about the number of subjects, data format, year of release, quality, accessibility score, data processing, or additional modalities, you should replace the unknown placeholders with this information. Remember, for maintainability and scalability, consider the dynamic loading of this data using a back-end service or JavaScript as discussed earlier, especially if the dataset is large or frequently updated. Um. So I do scraping, like automated scraping, uh, probably not allowed. Okay, we'll do it manually. Can we, like, semi 
a semi can we semi automate the scraping of this website can you actually look at the website don't think you are why well, there's conflict of interest rose t faggy and md Raphael Armin, a co-inventors of a patent application filed by the University of Houston related to this research, too. The rest of the authors have no conflicts of interest to declare that are relevant to the content of this article. We might finish now, we might continue this um, hopefully tomorrow or next time. Uh, let's just check if there are any questions. Facebook, no. Someone watching on Twitch, no questions. Um, ba, 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 ba. Nine, supposedly nine people probably zoned out on uh, LinkedIn. Don't think there are questions. So sometimes the yeah the platform is just quite bad anyway i can't see any um, and youtube no i haven't actually monitored youtube to Check the chat. No, there's nothing in the chat. So yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out bionicchaos.com. Let me know what you think. Bye.